Hi, my name is Arvalyn Hill, and I'm the coordinator of family programs at the Everett's Children's Adventure Garden at the New York Botanical Gardens. Today, we're gonna to get a chance to observe pollinators together. In just a moment, you're gonna have a closer look at this hydrangea bush. But before we do that, I want you to take a moment to think to yourself or ask someone who you're with, what is a pollinator? You can pause this video if you would like to think to yourself about that question. Just a sec, we're gonna observe this hydrangea bush together, and I'm gonna ask you some questions about what you're seeing. Let's get started. All right, welcome back. I hope you had a great discussion about what is a pollinator. To me, a pollinator is a insect or animal that moves pollen from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma of a flower. This helps to bring about fertilization in the plant. To put it simply, Pollination is what makes plants grow. And without pollinators, we that would not be able to happen. And there are many different types of pollinators. Some you can see in this video right now. Bees, butterflies, even bats are types of pollinators. And without pollinators, plants can't grow. And without plants, we don't have food and different uh, essential resources for humans to live. So I'm gonna ask you some questions to help you observe more closely in this video. And you can write down your answers on a piece of paper, or you can just think to yourself or talk with a friend that you might be with. First, what do you notice happening in this video? Is there anything you are wondering about pollination and pollinators? For example, the bees, the butterflies, and the different insects in this video. Does this remind you of anything else that you have seen before? So I hope you enjoyed getting a chance to observe these pollinators up closely. We're now gonna do an activity together around one type of pollinator, bees. For this activity, you're just gonna need a few simple materials. You'll need an empty tin can. You're going to need a pencil, some paper, scissors, tape, and string. So gather your materials and then we'll get started. All right, so now we're gonna get started with our craft. Today we are going to be making a bee house. So a bee house is a place for bees to rest between pollinating flowers. And bee houses protect bees in your neighborhood or around your home from chemicals, predators, and uh, the weather as well too, because it's important to help protect bees because they are essential to our environment and to plants. And without bees, plants can't grow. And then we don't have things like food and other resources that are essential to human life. So bees are super important. So we're gonna make a nice bee house for our bee friends. And to do that, you need some uh, string, you need like an empty tin can, like I said before, scissors, paper, and tape. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paper and if you have, you're gonna want, need a good amount of it because we're gonna make a bunch of tubes that go inside of this tin can. Uh, to make the process a little bit faster, you can fold the paper in half and then one more time. So it's about the same, you want it to be the same size as your tin. So my tin is goes about there, so I can cut it here. And depending on what size tin, your paper may be a different size, but you want to have it so that you have lots of strips of paper that can fit nicely inside of your tin. So that just cuts to make it go a little bit faster. And then you take one piece of paper and then you take your pencil and you're going to wrap the paper around the pencil. And then you're going to take a piece of tape to secure it. I'm going to need about two pieces of tape for this one. And then you can take the pencil out and then that's your first tube 
that's going to go inside of your tin. I'm going to still have to cut mine down so it can fit comfortably, but you're going to keep doing this until it fills the whole tin up. So this kind of takes a while, so you might want to have um, a grown-up help you or a friend. Um, so we're going to fill up the tin with our tubes and then we'll come back together, okay? So I finished putting um, all of my tubes into my tin for my bee house. I'll show you a little bit closer so you can see. So now the bees have a little area for them to rest in. And this is perfect for solitary bees who don't have hives um, as a place to be protected. And I cut some of the um, tubes that were sticking out really far to make sure that it was nice and flush with the tin uh, to keep the paper tubes protected in the rain. And then I just tied some string around the tin uh, to help hang it up. And you can decorate your bee house if you wanna paint it or add stickers to make it your own. But next you're gonna to wanna to put it in an area where bees are around. So whether that's outside in the garden or outside your windowsill, um, but you're going to want to put it in an area where the, you know that there are bees around so that they can find it and help be protected. So this is a wonderful activity for, uh, to help protect pollinators, specifically bees. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye.